The author is Laura Ingalls Wildler. And if you pick up her book after she's written four other books, you get to see where she started and how she got to where she got. It's like listening to an artist's fifth album body of work and then going back in time listening to their debut album and you see how much they've grown, how much they didn't have control in the beginning, how they were like making mistakes and how the fifth body of work is like professional. Like if you listen to Love Sucks by Avril Lavigne, you, it's, you hear it and you think this is too perfect, this is too on the nose, this is too pop punk. But then you go back in time to her debut album and you listen to, okay, I love all of those songs. Like Tomorrow, Things I Will Never Say, um, A Mobile, like that perspective of um, I'm in a hometown. I'm only fell in love with you because I see you every day at school. If I lived in any other city or any other town or any other state, I wouldn't fall in love with you. It's just happenstance, right? It's happenstance that I fell in love with you because I see you every day. That's why like teenage relationships are so funny to me. Like, how are you going to marry that your first love? Literally, if you went and lived in any other town, you would have never met this person. So maybe there is a little like soulmatey, wanting to believe in soulmatey concepts there. But I love mobile because it's the idea that you left the hometown and you got famous and you have to come back to it. And the people treat you differently, even though you're the same person. But okay. Um, but... I need to say that I love Love Sucks because it is perfect, it is on the nose, but she had to take so many albums just to get to that album. That's why it sounds so easy and like, it probably for her, it felt like it was nothing and it came out like water out of her mouth, but she worked like 15 years, wait, is it 20 years since um Let Go? 20 years for that album to come out. Like, it just puts her to perspective. There is a lot of good songs on there, like Avalanche, like um, Love Sucks, the title track. Um, I recommend starting the album at Love Sucks. Skip the first four or five tracks, start the album at Love Sucks. That's where the meat is at. Love that album. But it was so cool because we got to, this book was very observant. So it was like Laura observing and then writing about what she thought. So she was like observing her dad um, making bullet powder for the bullets so he can use them the next day and how he, his routine, how he poured hot water into it. So it was very like, I'm observing the world and I'm writing about it. So funny how I talked about Avril Lavigne's Let Go. That's what Let Go was about. It was, I'm a little girl observing the world and then I'm writing about it. And Love Sucks was like, the world already did me wrong. The world already did me right. So now I'm just gonna feel, I'm just gonna write of what I feel instead of like writing about what I observe. Do you think that shows like artistic growth? Like your first album is like what you see. Then by the time you get to the fifth album, it's like, fuck this. This is, I gain confidence in my feelings and how to write songs. I'm just gonna throw up. <coughs> I think a critical um critics response to love sucks is that it seems unfocused but that's the whole point that's what pop punk is like when you have pop artists and producers who know how to make a hit song you need a pop punk rebel in there to be like just throw middle fingers up to everyone like be like this came out fast this came out easy and this is a reaction to all the perfect ballads all the perfect trap rap songs. It was a response. Okay, but let's read a passage. Her and snapped at her. That scared her. I should think it would, Ma said. He was so savage. I thought he was going to bite me. Oh my God. Hello, Avril Lavigne, bite me. <laughs> said Aunt Eliza. I believe he would have. I never heard of such a thing, said Ma. What on earth did you do? I turned right around and ran into the house.